trying to find the child first trail. Hi, um, look, it's John one hour here. Uh, my number is 027-281-3963. Could you give me a call, please? Thank you very much. Bye for now. That was it. It's a lawyer for you. Closed. After hours. On a Monday. Hmm. That's where I thought Charles Hirschfeld worked, but anyway, that's, I'll try another one. Um, I was just trying to find someone in Albert Street where he was before. So let's have a look in here. I'm going through the whole list of lawyers. Something in Albert Street. Here we go, Karen. I think that's it. That's who her name is. Let's try. Karen Harding. Or okay. Hmm. I think that's the one. Karen Harding's Law. Barbara, look it's John Wanoa here speaking. Um, I, I'm just calling because I think um, Charles Hirschfeld was working with you there. Where would I find him? Yes, that'll do. Yes, that's what I rang one the um number but um I'll try his mobile. It's only the one that you mentioned. Yes. There's nine, yes. Seven five seven. Thank you very much. Hi. There, we've got a number. So Northcott. I knew he had shifted there, but his um, normal landline wasn't answering. So let's hope we get him this time. Let's try this time. Charles Hirschfeld, Barrister. Hello, is that Charles? Yes. Charles, it's John Wanoi here speaking. I'm Charles, how are you? I'm alright, thanks. And how are you? Oh, very well. Oh, good. Good. You still doing the the, the um, um, practice? Yes. Oh, good. Um, I'm still on my case with uh, Cook Street and the police, and um, but um, Shannon Withers, he was going to call you. I'm hoping that he can uh, rustle up some um, legal aid for you to to help with my case. Yeah, because um, he, I've given them information, but I, I don't think he's up to speed as much as you are. So I've requested that he applies to the court for more aid uh, for, for my case because it's quite involved and it's 
it's gone further. A lot of it is online, and um, uh, I want to link the whole thing back to Waitangi Marae, where I've got access into the Marae any time I want now with Kingi Taurua. That's getting into the into the new Britain government. That side of things, I'm right into that now. But you're the only proficient lawyer, the barrister that can handle that uh, that level of of um, uh, confederation stuff on top of this lot that I've gone through right up to now. And I just wanted to uh, touch base with you to um, see if I can get the, the the funding from what I'm already getting, and that that case is dragged on from um, October last year. Well, for Cook Street, and now it's become a police matter where the police have um, um, more or less tampered with my my information, and it's got them in trouble. Right. Hmm. But I can, uh, eh? Okay. Uh, that's that that in the four century case. That's that one with Natalie Flower Du Brown, the detective. Um, that um, um, took three days to uh, to come and arrest me from what happened on the Cook Street site. It, it's public news, it's disclosed, but Judge uh, Grant um, uh, Fraser found me innocent after I went to prison and came out and uh, told him that um, uh, the Pope had changed all the rules on Admiralty. And that made him uh, dismissed the case and then the police got up on their feet and pulled the case back into contract again and so that's where Shannon Withers picked up from there as a legal aid and um, of course I represented myself first and that's when it was dismissed but then they when they brought it back up and when I went come out of court it went back in again as a, a, a sort of new case um, that the police brought on me, but I'm taking her as being injuring me personally because of what the Pope said, it, they're liable, each one singled out now. That's not really the issue on, on hand, it's the documents that are um, challenging. She came and he arrested me with documents that weren't sealed by the court or by anything and she wrote them up herself that's that's what i'm saying to shannon from all everything that i've ever put together in a historic claim that um, um, uh, the documents themselves were faulty when she came into my room and stripped off my shirt that had all my regalia on it and uh, carted away that and, and my medication as well and confiscated all that lot. Hello? Hello? Oh shit. I ran out of credit. <clears throat> oh, I'm on camera. Hang on. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to put some more credit in my phone. It ran out. Um, hold on a minute, because I'm online with child might call me back. Um, I just top my phone up. I'm skinny, but I want to keep this video running because I'm talking to my barrister that's taking us into the United Nations um, with Sunakura and, and Chief Kingi Taurua. This is the lawyer, the barrister, who knows all my case back to front and he can help the case. Where? where? Oh. Sorry people, I'm, I'm I'm having to top my phone up this um keep the thing rolling.
Give me a second, just bear with me. Um, I make the videos like that. the capital letter name in the mystery man okay successful It'll ring now. I'll go and call him again. Sorry about that. Now we're back in business again. Here we go. Ciao. Yeah, Charles, it's John Wanoa here again. Um, I'll pass your number on to um, um, Shannon Withers, uh, Vulcan Chambers. He was going to call you anyway. Uh, yesterday I had a meeting with him on Sunday in his office in the city, and so he's operating from home. But I met him at his office in uh, Vulcan Lane yesterday, Sunday, and went over these uh, documents and stuff to just refresh him. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> the court has held me up right from then till now, and I've only got a disclosure uh, of uh, of the of the um, uh, Natalie Flower Dew Brown. Um, okay, I'll I'll give you a call again. And try try your phone again. Bye. trying to get Charl, at least I've, I've, I've sp spoken to him, and that's a real bonus. Right, I'll just try him again. Okay, so he's going to probably call me or um, ring with us and team up with him. But I've said to him that with us was going to ring him and um, um, get some advice from him, or if he can, I've requested that with us. Um, get legal aid because the historic land case is with uh, Charles Hirschfeld and all the rest of Sue Nakura claims to go to the United Nations and um, um, to the World Court. So um, with that, at least I've got his number now to leave a message with him 
and um, hear back from with us today is going to send me um, um, some information. I'll give him, in fact, I'll give him a call now. I'll give um, my lawyer, Barrister, Shannon Withers. He probably can't find the number of um, Charles. I'll just give him his number, message. I'll just, I won't bother ringing him. I'll just say, I spoke. So, here's Will. Here's Will. And Number is O <clears throat> okay, so there you go. Um, Charles Hirschfeld has been on my case for a long, long time. Um, with the same time, Sunakora and the Confederation of Tribes court hearings that. Um, she wants to take to the United Nations and then across to the World Court. It's all ready to go. He only needs to be paid and we're off. So I'm um, arranging or, or getting finance for that, if I can, from anywhere to go with a delegation to the United Nations. I'll be standing there talking and in the World Court with all this information about our lands, native lands. If anybody wants to <coughs> take my place, they're fine. But there's quite a bit involved and Charles has all the information on that and also the case that I have in the High Court of Admiralty in London, the High Court itself, with um, um, David Lindsay Mackey, judge, then, back then. That's going back, this case is going back to 2008. There's quite a bit involved, and, but Charles um, uh, will do it if he gets paid. So that's my problem, getting money for the whole round trip. I've got to arrange that, all of that, from somewhere. So, 
that's why I've got this company going uh, and claims going against land and fraud as being part and parcel of land claims that have been um, gone through the treaty claims. I did Mohi Manikau's Y121 for a long time, six years I was on that, full on. That's why I've got so much information from his history, from his mouth and titles to these lands. And also at the same time, Hare Utatonga for the Utatonga land title in Waitangi that's got only one house in the whole of the Bay of Islands. There's nothing else there. Just one house with bare paddocks. That's it. I've got it here for the Williams family and also the Ututonga family. That's all it's got, the Ututonga name on the title. It doesn't matter which Ututonga down the line or down the South Island or Waikato or anywhere, it's got it on that title at Waitangi on the Waitangi land blocks, Titi land blocks, and all the whole lot of the Bay of Islands for that matter. That's what I'm talking about with Charles Hirschfeld and Sunakora. Sunakora is the policy maker for Maori in the Labour government. Put it all together. Now I'm holding some of the titles that she's given to me whatever I want in the East Coast titles. So she's got the Papa or native titles to everywhere. Well, here it goes. Here's somebody. Hello, John here. Oh, um, I thought it was a lawyer's place. Is that the look? Oh yeah, it was for, I was trying to find if um, Charles Hirschfeld was working with you, the barrister. Oh, that's what I wanted to find out for, um, for to do my case for me. Um, no, I've just actually got off the phone to him. But yeah, I've, 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 I've rang a lawyer here and a lawyer there and in, ended up, I, I did find it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, oh, that's somebody returning a call for me looking around for a lawyer, for a uh, child. So really, um, I just have to make an appointment to see him and Kingi Taurua, uh, chief, to pick up on where we were, but it still boils down to no one does anything without being paid. That's always been my problem with our tidal energy project. The Moai tidal energy project is that larger scope that we needed lawyers and barristers to protect our financial investment interest in that and the land and the resources, particularly Admiralty Law of the Sea, where the turbines are going. We want our own titles on it not John Key's title from somewhere else. We want it straight into Britain on those tidal turbines. And the British government should be jumping down my throat to try and help. If they're watching this video, that's what my problem is. Finance. I have to arrange the whole lot myself. And the bank, and the notes, and everything in order to get these turbines spinning in the water. I've got the land. We've got people on the land down there waiting for me on Port Awanui. All those people in Rangitukia and the East Cape waiting for these turbines to start spinning. They can't do anything either. We've got plenty of land but no money to make that work. So I have to arrange all the funding myself on top of the engineering plans that are sitting there and no one's going to do it, Kawi Engineering, design engineers in Denmark, are going to pay their bill before they're going to jump and design the whole thing in the sea. That won't take long, as soon as we get the funding. We're going to, now I'm going to let the 
Chesco and register the company because the company's house in London didn't register Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Company because the address for the office, I didn't have an address for an office, but now I do. I just have to complete that, it's paid, the application has been paid to register the company. And I can do that tomorrow, as soon as that's done, we're on our way. I can pay tag pay. I've held off with tag pay, the mobile phone systems to do the bank, the Moai Powerhouse Bank, uh, Town Note, uh, till I got the company's office established with tag pay to transfer the money to bank, to bank, into the company, back to the, the customers, and press the shop uh, and um, blue snap gateways, which we use their customer base to put our products in, and they interpret it into the countries we're going into. 250 countries, but the countries of their customers gets to use the pound note as electronic money guaranteed by a king and our original native pound note from King Tafia. So these are real um, events that we have and legacies that we have to go on. It's not made up yesterday. These are historic documents of um, contracts with the British King and government and military and navy. So uh, with that in mind, um, I'm just saying that uh, we've got uh, King Toto to see today and to sit down with him and go over these matters with Hirschfeld uh, and the claims that who wants to take to the World Court. I'm there as a legal advocate, a uh, native assessor of lands. So we've got the land issue, we've got a bank issue, and we've got a shares issue going on at the same time. And I'm <coughs> putting all that together, single handed and got people sitting waiting in America, England, Scotland, here, Hungary, and India, waiting in Africa, waiting for me to kick things off. Now I'm in a position to at least let the shares go in this project that has got the backing of um, people who have been watching for a long, long time, hoping to buy shares in hydrogen, in the hydrogen economy, from the resource, natural resource in the sea. I had to establish the titles first in the sea, after this flag, the sea flag, king of the sea, on the Marae, and get that going. Now, the other thing is we've got blue snap, we've got... Um, Press the shop, the two companies that have got millions of customers of their own, and um, the product, the products that they market. We put our products in, one being the pound note. We can sell the pound note to the bank um, at the best rate. That's one product we put online, just different pound notes. <coughs> Gold bullion, bullion vault, has a, a allowed us, their profile, uh, company, logo on our company, my powerhouse group, Limited, and I have an account with them for a long time, and that should have kicked into life. They're still waiting for us to purchase gold, all our gold through King William's Gold um, Mineral X of Westminster Parliament 1830-1837 applies. 
from Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, King Itauru, Chief. And William Vault had had pre pre goal, uh, pre ounce of gold back then, but not now. And their customers, um, customers who come to us are their customers, um, and they um, we can pay them our our customers on their uh, recommendation to buy shares um, to buy gold from their um, their ownership of their shares. If they so wish, they can be paid out in gold from gold body involved or cash in the currency of their country from the conversion through tag pay of the pound note back into their currencies. So all we're doing is we've got a bank in England, we'll have a bank in England set up uh, as soon as we get the company registered, a bank, and we'll use a bank for now because the Moai will have its own bank before long. But I use a bank, the ANZ here, and the ANZ in London. There's an ANZ company in London. So I've already set up the ANZ bank here. Um, and um, on, 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 online. And uh, that's going through uh, to the overseas um, currency. Air, um, the overseas um, of foreign currency account uh, through my eye, Fairhouse Group and Natua Ewa Altair Limited registered company in New Zealand with the one off a trillion shares as the parent company in ANZ New Zealand. That company. Okay, so the company in in Britain, UK, London will be the Moai Powerhouse Group Limited. Uh, registered company in the company's house in London. Okay, so that's why I held off because this Cook Street title should have been seized. We we, we had we had the documents to do it, but the police stepped in. The it was the police that stopped everything, uh, and and the land conveyancing lawyers and the owners conspired with the police to stop all this business because of the land title itself. They're going to end up losing it anyway because it's contested. If the court rules against it, they're in trouble with the British government and motu propria law of the Vatican use. It's going to open a can of worms if the barrister doesn't follow what I'm saying. That's why he needed to talk to Charles Hirschfeld is proficient in native titles and how that works. He's proficient as a barrister in all what I'm doing with the Confederation. He is the barrister representing the Maori Confederation of Tribes in New Zealand and this flag. He's representing this flag to the United Nations and the World Court in Switzerland. Sunakora is that's his barrister and my barrister. Okay? Uh, Charles happens to be on our land blocks at Marangaro in my family. Okay? So that's Sue Nikora's nephew in our family. That's why he's there to protect our financial investment interests on our land. From a British point of view, he's been a lawyer in Britain. That's why he knows this British part and Waitangi, Marae, King's Bench Court. He knows that back to front. He advised me, told me, that I had to make the flag legal. Well, we did that on the 15th of April this year, 2016, inside the Waitangi Marae. You'll see it on video. You'll see Kingy there at five o'clock in the morning with Willie Pater and uh, Hoepa Epiha, the three chiefs, and us 
the rest of the, the people there and Mani Apoto, um, to Nakora, Maori government representative, um, Deputy Georgie Job. Okay, she was there representing Sunakora and the Maori government. Okay, so that's her political bent on Harvard. Qualified. Professional. Professor. Okay, so we're, we're, we're talking pretty serious legal issues here. That's why I'm going through a lot of trouble making these videos, putting them online to see who I am. And Sue Nakura listens to what I say in advice. I listen to her too in her advice. I support her, even though I'm doing the Moai, Commonwealth Government of the World, with King William flag on one side, just straight king, and she's on the other political side with the Maori and Iwi, sorting them out on the hapu side of... Maori, the word Maori, she's doing the Maori government, I'm doing the Moai, King William IV, Commonwealth Government of the World, to cover the whole world with this flag, 250 countries. This flag, the Queen has taken around the world and used its power to accumulate all the wealth that still belongs to the King's Bench Court. I'm there to speak for the King's Bench Court inside Auckland District Court. That's the problem they'll have because <coughs> they have to face what I'm saying. Now, this is the power note. I just have to show you, okay, that you'll see online. This is an instrument, by the way, that's in the ANZ Bank. This is the note. This is our form of native power note electronic, limited edition, with Jamie, Anna Marie, Patrick Stewart, and myself, in this photo, as real living people. Her family, it's the Stewart family, and the Patrick, her surname being Patrick. Patrick, St. Patrick, Irish, eight point star on this flag, of King William, the third, rescued the St. Patrick's Order Church from the Catholics and St. King James out of Westminster and Budamouth and wrenched St. Patrick's Order Church back into Ireland. Now, the Queen, Elizabeth Scottish, sold off or gave away St. Patrick's, took it and gave it to the Pope. That's how he managed to get a hold of it and make his new world order on that legacy. That legacy belongs to us and this flag of King William IV jurisdiction of Admiralty and King William III. King William III and King William IV is the eight point star legacy of these notes of acts of King William IV, 1838 and 1837. King Tafia came into this note You'll see it on the one with Desmond's face on it afterwards. But this is 970 million trillion trillion pound note, people. It's what we say. It's what they have to deny. This is what cost John Key and those TPP countries, the 16 of them, and also the federal, federal states, US federal states, Obama, this one's for you and Hillary Clinton. This is the bill that the British Navy and military is obligated. They're liable for letting John Key run rife here in this country because they're still attached to Britain. They're still getting the Queen authority from Britain round the back door through the EU Parliament because she's not dealing direct with them in their own contract with the 1843. This one here is the King's commercial contract, corporate. This is a corporate note on King William's side and every other New Zealand dollar and their laws and their corporate system 
of the Vatican's is on that side. This is not the Vatican's. This is ours contract with King William direct. The Vatican on that side sucked this one, authority of King William, and put it over there for their laws. All their laws, the Tele 1993 Act, all those UCC, UCC law acts don't apply with this. They've been wiped out on that side, but we've got our own unique laws, 1830-1837, direct into Westminster Parliament. Okay? It's in the lower house. I have to go there and put it in the upper house with the new laws. There are suggestions that the Scottish want the lords shut down in Westminster and new lords opened up in, in Glasgow, Scotland, where these land titles came from in New Zealand. Okay? I'm just making these points clear for a barrister to pick up on and enforce them through the courts. Right? That's what I wanted to enforce warrant of um, um, on, on Cook Street. I want, I've said to him, I want him to get an enforcement warrant and a, a rip of execution for that warrant. If they can't rebut what I'm saying in my affidavits, three of them. Okay, so this is our debtor levy instrument against all the debtors in the elite families right through the world, and the Queen, Elizabeth, fraudster, and the Pope and his church and state, fraudsters, and the Church of England, fraudsters, and the Rothschild Bank, fraudsters, and every other Commonwealth country that has been taken over, the indigenous peoples of the world, fraudsters. All the Crown agents of the Crown corporations, trusts, are liable to this note. Take note, Navy, British Navy, and British military, you are our partners to recover all of this debt from each individual living person and the dead persons with their corporate names are now liable against this note, okay? So that's just telling you. Um, Jamie in here is has a claim to the eight-point star of the St. Patrick, Patrick surname. It's linked to St. Patrick order title, okay? Just to make it clear, that's why we're on there. You wonder why their photo is with me. It's for that commercial contract reason. This is a commercial contract default instrument against everyone I just named. And she's the recipient or the inheritor of St. Patrick's order. Corporate system. Okay? Everything's corporate that I say because that's how commerce works. Without it, you have nothing. You can't play the game. This is the trillion pound note on each person's head that's libeled and renamed online. On Facebook is admissible evidence in High Court London. You can do court cases straight online, straight to them, and pay their fees and you are got a court case going. That's what I'm about to do with Cook Street. If they don't, cough up. With my birth certificate, then this applies to each person in the parliament here. They get one of these on your head. It's a bounty from the sheriff. Here. Sheriff. Okay? The sheriff can issue with this notice on you against all your assets. That's a levy data instrument. One for each person in the world, in the Commonwealth and the world itself, where the Queen has gone with our flag and business. This 
Gaul dragon represents the Gaul of King William the Fourth and King Solomon's mines. The gold mines all the way through to William the Conqueror to King William the Third who demolished Catholics out of Westminster and King William the Fourth who created the Acts of Westminster Pound Note Act and the Bank of England Act and the Gold Coins Act. So all our legacies add up to all of what I'm saying legally. <coughs> These are the notes. This one here is for Cook Street and it's got King Arthur on it and King, King William IV in their crowns. So we're just putting kings on our notes. And this one here with King William again, one billion pounds. They're all big notes because the banks buy big notes. We can sell these notes as debtor instruments to the bank to recover the debt with an uh, instrument from the military to recover it for the bank to cover the rec to cover the, the debtor. Okay? So that's got Matt Taylor on it in England and his King Arthur with standing with King William the Fourth. Okay, so that's a Moai Reserve World Bank. So we're heading off into a World Bank from the shares that are online uh, when we get the tag pay going and the pound note bank um, notes going. Um, so that's yet to happen once we register the company. So that's all the notes. I thought I had one for Desmond. Uh, it's somewhere, but it's in another folder. Um, so that's all. S 1760 Sovereign Trade Flag Reserve. Uh, King George III, King George IV and King William the fourth Royal Coat of Arms and Flags which my ancestor King Waitaheke Kotari purchased in 1760. So that's another native who got this from King William the Fourth. Okay. These are just some of the documents I've got over the years, over 20 years with King Toto and Mohi Manikau further than that. So Mohi Manikau was instrumental in teaching me a lot what I know about his titles that caused me to investigate my own titles and everybody else's titles. So really that's all I want to say on this video is quite long but um, um, I'll just let um, Hirschfeld and um, um, Shannon Withers two barristers talk to each other. Okay, so I'm glad now that they've got communication between them to find out more about the case and I'll just leave it at that for now. So thank you very much. John Mon Island here, Odahu, Auckland. See you later. Happy birthday, me. From me to my other self, John Wanoa, Mystery Man. I hope you have a nice birthday with me and my birthday when I come to meet you in court and find out where all that money's behind that locked door and who's operating behind there. That's what I want to find out with my barrister. That's going to open a big can of worms. I can assure you the judge cannot lie in front of the Pope. Now that you all know, motu propria is a document and its legal status, I'll just check that, what it says. I'll just go back to where it says, what it says. If I've still got it here. 
here it is. Right, it is, this is, this is, I'm better to read it out. The Holy See, a Polistic letter issued motu propria, motu, motu proprio, of the Supreme Pontiff Francis, on the jurisdiction of judicial authorities of Vatican City State in criminal matters. You get that? Criminal matters. He's getting rid of crime by demolishing trusts and corporations that this government is using in the courts and the lawyers and the police. Hmm? It says, states, in our times the common good is increasingly threatened by transnational organized crime. The improper use of the markets and of the economy as well as by terrorism. It is therefore necessary for international community to adopt adequate legal instruments to prevent the counter-criminals activity by promoting international judicial cooperation on criminal matters. In ratifying numerous international conventions in these areas and acting also on behalf of Vatican City State, the Holy See, has constantly maintained that such agreements are effective means to prevent criminal activities that threaten human dignity, the common good and peace. With a view of renewing the apostolic, apostolic C's commitment to cooperate, cooperate to these ends, by means of this apostolic letter issued motu proprio, I establish that. One, the competent judicial authorities of Vatican City State shall also exercise penal jurisdiction over A, crimes committed against the security, the fundamental interests of the patrimony of the Holy See. B. Crimes referred to in Vatican City State Law number 8 V111 of 11th of July 2013 containing supplementary norms on criminal matter, law matters. In Vatican City State State Law Number 1X9, that's 9, of 11th of July 2013, containing amendments to the Criminal Code and the Criminal Procedure Code. See what I'm saying? When such crimes are committed by persons referred to in paragraph 3 below in the exercise of their functions. C. Any other crime whose prosecution is required by an international agreement ratified by the Holy See if the perpetrator is physically present in the territory of Vatican City State and has not been extradited. 2. The crimes referred to in paragraph 1 are to be judged pursuant to the criminal law in force in Vatican City State at the time of their commission without prejudice to the general principles of the legal system on the temporal application of criminal laws. 3. The purpose of Vatican criminal law, the following persons are deemed public officials. Listen, public officials. A. Members, officials and personnel of various organs of the Com Roman Curia and of institutions connected to it. B. Papal legates and diplomatic personnel of the Holy See. C. Those persons who serve as representatives, listen, managers or directors, as well as persons who even de facto manage or exercise 
control over the entities directly dependent on the Holy See and listed in the registry on, of canonical juridical persons kept by the government of Vatican City State. D. Any other person holding an administrative or judicial mandate on in the Holy See, permanent or temporary, paid or unpaid, irrespective of that person's seniority. 4. The jurisdiction referred to in paragraph 1 comprises also the administrative liability, liability of juridical, juridical persons arising from crimes as regulated by Vatican City state laws. State laws, right? Five, when the same matters are prosecuted in other states, the provision in force in Vatican City state on concurrent jurisdiction shall apply. That means here in New Zealand, apply on that number five. When the same matters are prosecuted in other states, the provision in force in Vatican City, Rome, state, on concurrent jurisdictions shall apply. He's just said it applies everywhere there are states. Six, the content of Article 23 of Law, number CX1X of 21st of November 8, 1987, which approves the Jew order of the Vatican City State remains in force. This I decide and establish anything to the contrary, notwithstanding, notwithstanding I establish that this apostolic letter issued motu proprio will be promulga promulgated by its publication in El Osservato Romano entering into force on the 1st of September 2013, given in Rome at the Apostolic Palace on the 11th of July 2013, the first of my pontificate. Franciscus, copyright Libertia in Ditris Vaticana. So there you go. Now somebody's just texted me. I spoke to Charles Hirschfeld and said you could call him, you would call him. Let's, I see that. Who just texted me? Hang on. I just want to find who texted me. Who texted me? Yes. Ashley. Happy birthday, Dad. Hope you're having a good day. I will come up with pick you up for dinner. So where's something nice? So we can go somewhere nice. Okay. Thank you. That's my daughter, Ashley. You. Thank you. She'll be running the bank, by the way. Uh, she's um, got the degrees in business management and administration and accounting. Um, 22, I think. Um, thank you, Catherine. For me, uh, Kim. Thank you. Catherine's 24 or 25. 25. Ashley's 24, I think I'm getting my. Um, wires crossed, the dates. I'll get on to this thing in a minute. There we go, my birthday. So, getting a few. Well wishes from Facebook. There's quite a few people that 
follow me. And um, anyway, we're getting back to Pope Francis. <clears throat> the motu proprio is a law that has demolished or destroyed all of the Vatican's laws in the world. This, what I just said, has destroyed New Zealand's use of those laws against me in court, in any court in the world. So I'll be surprised if my barrister can't put this one across to the judge in the court. You're going to watch how they perform against this one. This is the highest law in the world here. I just told to you. Pope Francis is the wealthiest man in the world. That's got the most money in the world that's running this world. Apart from the other Rothschild and their families, their elite families. The Pope runs the lot. The parliaments and the governments and also the universities, the black pope, the white pope, and this one, Pope Francis, the fake pope. Okay? So, I'm being serious when I read that out, that I'm hoping that you, the viewer, watching this video, apart from all the other little bits that's taking a long time, that this is a serious public statement I'm making that this will null any claims against me by the police. It wipes their jurisdiction right out. If they start using those UCC laws, the bank laws, the admiralty laws, the courier law, the civil law against me, the Admiralty Mortgage Bank Loan Law and the law she's trying to charge me with, I'm afraid, comes from here, this man. So if they use it, they're breaking the law of higher authority than this flag, which is higher than this again, the King's Law that made the money and the commerce. The Pope sucks off that one for this one. And this one demolishes your Queen's laws. You can't touch the King and the Moai statue, memorials, and the native and King Itoru and his highest court in the world, Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Okay? And I happen to be its sheriff. I happen to be its sheriff. Appointed by the chief himself. I'll be on the phone to him soon. Just to tell him. We got a meeting today. Okay? So Shannon, if you're watching this video, I'll send it to you. This is what I mean by Motu Propria as my last line of defense and my ammunition in my case to stop anybody using those laws against me and the king the king total and the land here and John Key John Key is a criminal and I want him in court. After I finish my court, I want myself found innocent, like Judge Grant Fraser found me innocent in the first place when I quoted this. I quoted Motu Proprio, demolished his laws on me. That's why he went away and came back. I wrote it all down. I scribbled it out on the charge sheets that came to me in the prison. You see, I had to go to prison in order to get a case so I can find who's mystery with these laws and our law of the king. Hmm? 
a court them square and fair. And those people on the land block have caught them fair and square with this. You see, they don't know they're not lawyers or barristers up to this level of intelligence of a pope and a king and a chief, king total military man. Well, that's all. That'll do for now. We'll catch you later. Happy birthday to me and a man in a mirror behind the ball. His name is John Wah Noah. Okay, bye.